Welcome to Las Vegas. AWS took over the strip this week with an exhaustive list of exciting announcements. Among them, tools for developers, including an update to a crowd favorite from last year. What's inside this box announced here at the show from AWS and Intel? We'll find out coming up. Now in its seventh year and the biggest show yet, reInvent brings together tens of thousands of developers, tech leaders and vendors showing off the latest in AI, IoT, HPC and more. I'm Brian Westbrook and the GeekWire team is back in Las Vegas for another AWS reInvent. Let's dive right in. This is Shift presented by Intel and GeekWire. Intel and Amazon, I said, have worked together for over a decade and they have worked so closely with us at a technical level. We do custom SKUs for them every generation that are you know, deeply tuned for their workload, for their customers to deliver the most value. You know, it's so exciting. This is my first time at AWS reInvent and with more than 50,000 people here, I just feel the energy. Um, and this is really about an over 10 year collaboration between AWS and Intel. And that collaboration is creating really amazing results for AWS customers. To be able to have a deep collaborative technology partnership and go to market partnership with a company like Amazon is a way that both companies can better accelerate making these technologies and getting them out to the market and transforming industries. Some exciting news here at AWS reInvent. Let's talk about product launches. What was announced? Well, uh, we have this cute guy right here, uh, also known as Deep Racer, uh, which was one of the big announcements that we did today uh, with AWS. And really what we're focusing the spotlight on is a challenge for developers to start working with reinforcement learning as one field of AI. And what's interesting about reinforcement learning is you don't have necessarily a pre-trained data set. So unlike things like computer vision, where you've got thousands of people that are training uh, millions of images to understand what's a stop sign, what's a cat. Uh, this is based on uh, an unknown data set where you don't actually know what the answer is. On this cloudy day in Las Vegas, developers raced inside to take their own machine learning toolkits for a trip around the racetrack. To see how developers were using their deep racer machine learning toolkits, we went over to the MGM Garden Arena to see these test tracks in action. There, developers took apart the Deep Racer, programmed the Deep Racer, and taught it how to drive around a course. What led to the development of this, and why a car? We actually launched um, a project with Amazon a year ago called Deep Lens. It was an AI-capable camera uh, able to do computer vision. It was the first uh, cloud-connected uh, deep learning camera brought to the market. And what we've done is we've actually put one of those Deep Lens cameras into Deep Racer, and now we've given it mobility. So this uh, now creates an exponential challenge for developers to figure out how they can get um, their uh, algorithms and their models optimized in AWS Cloud, but working in the real world, what Intel did was develop something called RL Coach and integrated that into AWS SageMaker. And that allows now anyone to be able to access uh, these capabilities. Lots of big announcements this week. What are you most excited about? Well, we have a lot of great things. I mean, we're, we're bringing um, AI to the edge with the Deep Lens. Actually very excited about that because it's really a way to extend AI and machine learning from the cloud all the way out to the edge in a very seamless way, uh, enabled by Intel technology. Also, RL Coach is something that we've been working on for a little while. It's an open source library that allows us to do um, reinforcement learning in a simulation environment and really build these uh, capabilities up before you ever see the real world. I believe this is actually a fundamental building block to how we're going to move AI forward. What are some of the challenges and what are Intel and AWS doing together to solve those? Well, computing power is a piece of it. Data is another piece of it. Um, use cases and, and scale are another piece. So we all have different unique aspects of those, of those components and we are bringing them together uh, through collaborations like Deep Lens um, or just in the cloud in general. Um, uh, Xeon is sort of the heart and uh, the foundation of AI. AWS brings the scale to the market, we bring the fundamental technology and that's a very, very powerful combo. So there's a lot of shuffling around in and out of the cloud. How is this happening and, and what's making it easier? 
Well, we've just announced a new service this morning, AWS Data Sync, which enables customers to migrate data quicker from on-prem into the cloud, and we feel like it's those pipelines as well as our direct connect access that allows customers to migrate their on-prem data quicker into the cloud. And what we're also seeing is an adoption of greater public data sets, so where they're working with data that's already in S3, then it makes sense to do the compute where the data is. Whereas in the past, you had to make decisions about trying to move the data where the compute is. Now we're seeing a complete flip, and it's let's move the compute to where our data is. So if our data is residing already in the cloud, then it makes sense to do the computing there as well. So C5 is a really cool instance. It's based on our latest Intel Xeon scalable processor. And for workloads like high frequency trading, genomics analytics, for weather modeling, high performance computing in all sorts of industries, you can see a tremendous benefit, literally up to a 2x performance improvement for your applications. That's huge value, and it allows you to do so much more. One of the great uses for AI and machine learning is in the IoT Internet of Things space. Talk to us about that relationship and why AI ML is so important in IoT. You know, it's, I th again, when I said tip of the iceberg in the IoT space, it's the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Not excited at all, are you? No, I mean, it's just there is so much still to come as you're able to push um, the, the artificial intelligence workload down to the edge. And Intel's made silicon investments here uh, with our Movidius team um, in putting inference and even training at the edge on the you know, devices. And then you see things like the, the race car. And again, it's a cool, fun concept, but it is also a demonstration of like what small form factors and capabilities you can have real algorithm work done on. A lot of people are talking about the convergence of HPC and AI, but it's not really a convergence, it's more of a confluence. And it's in terms of workflows. So what's happened in the past is HPC has been associated with simulation, modeling, primarily scientific and engineering calculations. And AI has really been associated with dedicated deep learning on massive data sets like you might get from the cloud. What's happening now is people are realizing they can accelerate their science, accelerate their product development by combining the simulation and modeling with AI techniques such as training and inference on the same platform. Why are these two worlds that important? So really it's, uh, an example would be in bioinformatics, right? So you have a, a data scientist who's looking to solve cancer, um, and he's running next generation tools such as TensorFlow or MXNet and those types of things. Really by using the power of the cloud, he no longer has to rely on how to get these resources. He can put all of his data as in a data lake for other engineers and other teams to grab what he's generating. You can visualize um, and use remote desktop technologies easily while that data is in the cloud. So instead of moving, you know, data, you keep the data in the cloud. Everything is there for engineers and applica application users to use, um, and you really consolidate a lot of your efforts into one bucket in the cloud. And you use the scale of, of what AWS and Intel are offering. AI and ML are accelerated through HPC, right? So if you're running a model and it needs a lot of cores or it needs a lot of data and you have finite resources on-prem, then you can really accelerate your time to market. You can accelerate your turnaround times by putting that in AWS. Where will this technology advance in the next year, two years, 10 years? What, what do you see happening? We are launching our next generation platform uh, at the beginning of next year, uh, the next generation CM platform. Um, our new memory technology, Intel Optane Data Center Persistent Memory, is coming out with that platform. It is a revolutionary. This isn't DIMMS. This is a new memory technology that in a memory module on the platform brings persistence and much, much larger memory capacity. So there's a whole, whole uh, new set of innovation that has never been able to be done before that can now happen because of this breakthrough technology. Thanks for watching as we took a peek inside the latest in artificial intelligence, machine learning, high performance computing, and what's new in the IoT space. And we got behind the wheel of Deep Racer, a development environment for deep learning. I'm Brian Westbrook, this is Shift, presented by Intel and GeekWire. Don't forget to check us out online at geekwire.com slash shift, subscribe for more, and until next time, off we go.